Welcome to this presentation of ProAct On Demand 2.0. This is Reliability Center's newest online root cause analysis application. It's a complete project manager for analyzing undesirable events, identifying the specific root causes and other contributing factors, and to document and track the corrective actions that you put in place. My name is John Bartlow and I will be your host. Let's go ahead and get started. From the main home screen of Proact On Demand, we have a few options here. We have two different methods in which we can create a new analysis in the system. We can also access our administrative functions here. We can make a copy of an existing analysis in the system if we would like to then edit it and make some changes to it if we're working on a similar RCA that may be already in the database. We can print the tree and we can do a couple other things from here. Uh, we can also downlo download a quick reference guide. For now, let's take a look at how to set up a new RCA in the system. So I'll click on New Analysis Wizard, and the first step that we're going to see is the severity calculator, which is a 1 through 25 scale, which allows us to rank the severity of the event that we're analyzing. Um, you, you may notice down here that, it, that it's giving you a recommended analysis type based on the severity you choose. So if I take it down to the lowest end of the spectrum, it's recommending maybe you would like to do a 5Y. And then up to the highest end of the spectrum, it's saying that a full root cause analysis needs to be done. And if I am going to leave it here in the middle, it's going to, suge it's going to suggest a logic tree. And again, these are just recommended analysis types. So I will, I will actually put my likelihood to recur as likely if we do not do something about it, and our consequence are high. So this is also saying a full RCA needs to be done. So if I go on to the next step, let's give our analysis a name, and I'll say that this example is going to be a medication error, and I'll put today's date. I do need to select an analysis type. This is a default list of types that we have for categorizing the RCAs that you create, and this can be customized. For now, I will call this a risk. You can also type up an analysis description, uh, which is just a description of, or a description of the event, rather, or, or of the failure, um, the reason why you're doing the RCA. And you can always come back and do this later. Here are our critical success factors, which are just rules or guidelines for the team. Again, this list is customized, customizable. Um, I, will, I will just choose a few um, that we will um, assemble a team to participate in the RCA of cross-functional people, um, that we will verify our hypotheses. In other words, we're not going to accept opinion as fact, and that no one will be disciplined for honest mistakes. That's very important. So as we interview people, they won't be reluctant to give us information. So I'll just choose those three for now. And here's where we have an opportunity to create our team charter, the default charter, uh, which is just a one paragraph statement of why the team is together and what its objective is. I'll go on to the next step. And the start date for our analysis is the day we set it up in the system, today's date. And the, uh, the default expected completion date is 30 days in, uh, later. Um, that can always be changed just by using the calendar tool. And we do need to put enter the event date, the, uh, the date the event occurred that we're analyzing. So I'll just go back a couple of weeks and choose a date. Now I can select the other folks uh, that are going to participate with me uh, on this RCA. I'll just select a few. And now it's giving me an opportunity to describe the event which is the reason we are doing this RCA. And in this particular case, I'll say it is an excessive length of stay. And now I want to add my failure mode, which is the facts that cause this excessive length of stay, the observed fact that caused, or facts that caused this excessive length of stay. Um, in this particular case, it was an allergic reaction. It does give you the opportunity to add multiple failure modes if I like, or I can just click complete if, if I just have one. In this case, I just have one. It was an allergic reaction that caused the excessive length of stay. 
And just very quickly, for the novice analyst, there is a guide section over here that is that will be available to you throughout the application that will give you that will define different elements within the program and also give suggestions on next steps. So this can be very helpful for the novice analyst. For example, if, if I'm not quite sure what an event would be, if I click on example down here, well, regulatory violation and then uh, injury or harm, unacceptable risk, these would, or near miss, these, these would be examples of events, reasons that trigger an RCA. Okay, so as we're, as we've got our event and our mode defined, so we've got our problem statement, so now we want to ask ourselves the question, how could we have an allergic reaction? Uh, well, I'll, I'll say that I, possibly that the drug allergy could be unknown to the hospital staff, so I'll add that as a possible hypothesis. So I'll say drug allergy unknown. And another possibility is a medication order process error of some sort. So you'll notice that these are hypotheses, and we need to verify these with facts. And we do have a verification log where we can document how we verified these. So if I want to go into the drug allergy unknown and enter a verification, our verification method could be interview with staff and review of chart. And we could, we could say, based on our interviews and a review of the chart, it was known this patient was allergic to this particular drug. And I could even upload um, a copy of, of the chart or interview notes or anything like that as, a, as an external document to support my RCA. I can do that as well. We'll just say that this was completed today. Um, and I will say that I, I took care of this, this verification. And based on this, now, if I go back to the information tab for this, we can go ahead and mark it not true. So we did know about this drug allergy, and, and then it's, and we, but we show here that we checked it. So we're going we're gonna to follow the, that we had some sort of a medication order process error. Um, this is a good time to point out that a ProAct on Demand Account comes with a template library for healthcare. Uh, there's about 200 of them in there, and you can search the templates very easily just by using a keyword search. So if I just want to search on the word medication, what I'll do is we, we call it a previous suggestion search. So I go up here to the previous suggestions field, and I'm just going to search on just the word medication. Go ahead and click go, and it's going to bring up all of these possibilities that could cause or that, that have something to do with the keyword medication. So right here, I've got manufacturing error. I've got prescribing error, transcribing error, monitoring, dispensing, and administering. These all sound like pretty good things to check uh, as far as something that could cause a medication order process error. So if I'm comfortable with these, I can just go ahead and select them and add them to my tree. So this is how the templates work. And as you can see, there's up to 22 pages um, and there will be some repeats within here because I'm just doing a, a search on the word medication. Um, but this is all being pulled from our template. So this can be a very helpful um, tool um, in the Proact On Demand account to help you and your team as you do an RCA. So I'll go ahead and add these possibilities to my tree. And these are things that I need to now investigate. So for the purposes of this demonstration, we're going to focus on the medication dispensing error. So we'll say that, that all of these other possible hypotheses we have checked, we've verified, and we've ruled out. So we're going to mark those as not true. So what we would like to do is just to ask ourselves, how could we have a medication dispensing error? Well, it could be the wrong type of drug was dispensed. Or maybe it was the correct antibiotic, but it was the wrong version that was dispensed. So I'll say correct antibiotic, wrong version. Okay. In this
this particular example, we're going to follow the correct antibiotic, wrong version dispense. And you may notice these ones here. Uh, these, these are uh, confidence factors. So if I'm, if I'm confident that this was the case, I can actually raise that up to a five if I would like to, if I would like to have a visual cue of what I'm going to follow on here, other than, of course, the ones that I have marked is not true. Um, that's also a very good visual, visual cue. But I'll also change the confidence factor on the dispensing error up to a five as well. And we're going to say that we've ruled out that it was the wrong type of drug. And this is based, again, on our interviews with people. So how could I have the correct antibiotic and the wrong version dispense? Well, quite simply, one possibility is the correct version is unavailable. How could the correct version be unavailable? Uh, well, in this particular case, we found that there was a decision to curve the scope of the formulary. Another, how could a correct version be unavailable? Um, it could, maybe it was just stocked out. Correct meds stocked out. But as I stated, in this particular case, there was a decision to curb the scope of the formula. So now we're at the, because since we have a decision here, we're at the human element. So why would there have been a decision to curb the scope of the formula? I can use the build hypothesis list to add some items into a list, and then I can choose to add them to the tree if I like. Well, in this particular case, there was a cost reduction effort in place. Um, there was there was also no input requested from physicians from physicians uh, for this uh, on this how we were going to design the formulary so no input requested from physicians and also there there was just no quality control or quality assurance check on the formulary design. Basically, we're, we're asking the question, how could uh, this person just have unilaterally decided or, you know, or small group of people had decided to curb the scope of the formulary without, without uh, getting the um, recommended input from physicians as far as like having a process and procedure in which to do this. Um, and then, of course, the cost reduction effort would just be a condition that, that caused this to happen. Uh, so in this particular example... Uh, the correct version being unavailable would actually be our physical root cause. Um, uh, obviously, the decision to curb the scope of the formulary, that would be our human root cause. And then, the, as, I, as I explained, these systemic conditions here um, and failure to follow procedures and that sort of thing um, would be what we call latent root causes. Some folks may use the word systemic root causes, but these are our organizational weaknesses that we need to address. So I'll go ahead and label these as such. And this is where we would want to focus our, our action items. So now that I've got some root causes identified, let's go ahead and create uh, some action items or recommendations. So if I want to go ahead and add one, select which root cause we would like to focus on, um, I think that we, the fact that we don't have any um, quality control procedure on how we're going to design the pharmacy formulary is probably a very important one. So I'll go ahead and I'll assign this recommendation to myself. And what are we going to track as, as a measure of that our recommendation was effective? Well, I'll just put for now, I'll put frequency of ad, adverse drug events. So I'll, I'll just put that in for now. Um, when do we expect to have this done? I'm going to say by the end of the month. And we'll say we've already gotten approval for this. Um, so I'll go ahead and put it in progress because we've already begun work. And what are we, what are we going to do? We're going to, we're going to use a quality based formulary selection algorithm 
something like that. This I know this sounds very fancy. Um, and basically that we're going to base the selection of our, of our formulary on efficiency and effectiveness, patient safety, and evidence-based outcomes, something like that. So I could type all of that information into the more detailed section if I, if I would like to. But th basically, this is saying that we need to review how we um, design the formulary of our pharmacy. So I'll just go ahead and put this in for sake of demonstration for today. So now, we have identified our root causes, and we've, we've made some action items. So let's take a look at our final report. And I actually have a more complete version of this example in my database. So just for the sake of showing you what a completed report looks like, we'll go to that one. And we'll, we'll go to the, we will access the report in the communicate section. And I can either use the default report format or I can do custom topics. I'm gonna to choose custom topics just so you can see the topics that are available to you. And they are all right here. So I'm just going to go ahead and go down the list very quickly and include everything. But you can pick and choose what you would like to include in your report, and you can save as many different report formats as you like. I've got my company logo uploaded for the cover page. And if I want to enter footer notes such as privileged information or confidential, I can do that so it will appear on the report. And now it's going to generate a preview, which I can then export to PDF. So here's our final report. This is showing all of the data that we collected and people that we talked to. Um, so in other words, our people or our interviews, the documentation would be our paper, and any sort of tangible evidence that we collected. In this case, it would be the dispensed cephalosporin. Uh, so this is all documented here. The team members here are charter, critical success factor, dates, and severity matrix. And just a quick snapshot of the tree, which is included in the report, and this can also be printed separately. All of our verification logs that we put in to verify our hypotheses on the tree, our summary of our event, and then the summary of our findings and our investigation. Here's some recommendations that we made and then more detailed recommendations. And then the root cause action plan uh, is just is going to show also if we did, in this case, we did not put in a metric to track, but it would also include that information for us as well. So we can show what we're going to check our recommendations against for effectiveness. And again, this is a preview that you can then send this to PDF and then share it across your organization with those that you like. So this concludes our presentation of ProAct On Demand 2.0. If you would like to get additional information, I encourage you to contact us at the contact information shown here or to visit us at www.reliability.com. Thank you for your time.